G'day, welcome to Mount Cranber Agriculture. It's um, 2nd of November, 2021, Melbourne Cup Day. Um, I spent the morning getting these 15 boxes of honey from my Coldwater Creek site. Um, this is fresh uh, summer honey, so be a mixture of uh, the ground covers we got here, mainly clover hopefully, a bit of iron bark, a bit of turpentine, and a lot of other stuff mixed in, so um, this is a really good honey mixture of 10 frame and 9 frame box. So I've um, taken this honey off this morning, I'll bring it up in the back of the ute, get it off the back of the ute into under my little trolley. Uh, it saves me a lot of back breaking from carrying it down um, manually. I can fit four on that little trailer and just run it down the alleyway between the house and the shed here. Uh, for a couple hundred bucks it's really saved me a lot of, a lot of back pain and an effort, so um, thanks to Sam for recommending that that trailer for me. It's made life a lot a lot easier. So it then comes off the little trolley and into my honey room. Normally, I would start straight away. That's what I'm doing today. So I'm harvesting, I'm extracting the same day I'm going to harvest. I won't get all this done tonight, but I will finish it off probably by lunchtime tomorrow. So I'll just take you through the process again. I have done a little honey extracting video, but it's been a little while, so I'll just show you how I do it. This is very, very small scale. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a beekeeping minnow, I've only got about 100 hives, so but this, this way I've found um, I can get a fair bit of honey through fairly quickly with not much effort. So we'll go through that process and, and show you how we do it. So yeah, just the process, so there's our honey sitting on um, some clean towels just to minimise the floor contact, keep my floor free of honey. Then comes along, I'm just waiting for my fry pan full of hot water to heat up, just with a couple of normal honey knives, they're quite cheap, and uh, warm water just helps to glide through that wax a little bit, it doesn't really heat, heat up the honey or anything like that, it just it makes it a bit easier on my arms. So, got our little uncapping unit here, I've had that for probably 15 years. Uh, they're great little setups. I'm limited by the amount of wax that'll that'll fit in here, so I won't fit 15 boxes of wax in there, so it'll have to drain overnight, and um, I'll partly empty it and finish it off tomorrow. Onto my 24 frame radial extractor. Nice Chinese one. Um, it's had a couple of owners before me. It's doing its job and it doesn't owe me any money so hopefully it'll just keep going. I've recently just replaced the bearings in the bottom which made me just running a lot better and it's also had the um, the um, inverter or um, control unit replaced as well so apart from the actual motor nothing much else can break on it so let's hope it keeps going. Honey gets to count out of the bottom and I keep a tub there just to minimise contact with the floor once again and if anything overflows, if I get distracted or someone rings me or something, you inevitably walk away and leave the bloody tap on. So if it does overflow, it just overflows into that tub and not onto the floor, which has happened quite a few times. So just looking around, um, the honey gets decanted into those 50 litre drums and it just settles for a couple of settles for a couple of days and then I just decant the honey off the bottom and I've got a heap of drums there ready to to take it and a hundred new um, clean buckets so they're ex yogurt buckets from the yogurt factory in Woolgilga they get cleaned up, washed and sanitised and used over and over and over again. So you can see my little stockpile of, of honey there. All right, so my water should be heating up now and we'll, um, we'll get stuck into it. We've got our water in our fry pan nice and hot and our knives warmed up. So beautiful frame of um, fully capped honey. It's beautiful honey, it uh, really is tasty, nice light colour, so um, 
I'm really pleased to have it. So, I like to start at the bottom. This is a sorting motion. Tub's a bit unstable until you get a bit of honey in it. Move around a little bit. Swap knives. Because I'll put 10 frames in a 10 frame box, you'll get the odd low spot. Just get my honey scraper. Capping scraper on me. Scrape those cappings off. Into the scrapper with the top of the frame towards the outside. It's in okay. And I always, because I maintain a barrier system, so I want the same frames to go back into the same boxes and back on the same hive. So I always mark that first frame, put a one there, so I know that's the first frame of box one. And I just keep it all correlated. So as I go through, um, there'll be 10 frames in this box. So when I've got those 10 frames in, I'll put another cross in two, and then I'll, I'll know that's it for the second box. So it's just good to um, maintain that, that barrier. I just go along and take the um, boxes off the hives. I don't check them for disease prior to extraction. So I want to make sure that the same box goes back onto the same hive. So if there is any disease in there, the spread is minimised. So it's really important that you maintain a barrier system. Second frame. Beautiful fully cap frame of honey once again. That's the low spots. Again, beautiful frame of almost fully capped honey. See if that side is fully capped. Pretty to look at. foundation in that frame. Every frame doesn't have to be fully capped or even 80% capped, uh, provided the majority of your frames are uh, fully capped or, or getting there. Um, you can slip the odd one in that isn't, so it all that out. to be experts doing it like that. I call that the Instagram method and that's right if you've got all day but it's much quicker doing it this way. I'm sure that's the way these things were designed to be used. Four. And we'll just do one more.
once again, that's 70 or 80% cap. Yeah, so that So we'll keep going with Phyllis Extractor to get that going. So this is the way I do it. It's a pretty simple process. Um, yes, it's slower than an automatic rind. Um, I don't have the money for that sort of thing. As long as you put your mind to it, you can get through these um, 10 to 15 boxes in you know, probably half a day and get them back out and back onto the hides. So we'll keep working away and then we'll get this extractor going. We've got our extractor loaded up. There's 24 frames in there. I've got them all um, fitted in neatly just so it'll stay in balance. Um, trick with these things is just start it out nice and slowly, just for it to settle down. So I like to run it slowly for about five minutes and you'll see the honey start to come out Starting to spin out now. It'll be a little bit unbalanced until the frames even up a bit. So don't run them flat out straight away because um, you'll damage the extractor. So I can see honey coming out of it now, and that's reading about. about 22 on this dial, I just know that, that when it reads that it's going to spin the honey out. So um, These boxes have just come out of hives today, so the honey's still reasonably warm. Uh, nice warm honey will run out of the frame quite easily, so that's running out there nicely now. So what I'll do is I'll just run that for 10 minutes or so. Yeah, if you go too fast it'll start to wobble and get unbalanced, it's just because not every frame in there has got the same weight of honey in it, so until they even up a bit, um, it'll, it'll run a bit wonky, so it's always good to run it nice and slow for, for five or ten minutes till just, just till all those frames even up. So we'll let that go for a while now. So that's been running for about 15 minutes. I've just been out and done a few other little jobs. Just kick that along a bit now. It's a little bit unbalanced because there's a few uneven frames in there, so. We'll just leave that again, let it run for another Another 10 or so minutes, there's still quite a bit of honey coming out of that. So it's been going for about another five minutes. We'll give it another another kick along. That was reading about 30 on the inverter. A little bit of a knock, I'll just run it, run it back. Just a little bit unbalanced. Shine a torch, you'll see the honey still coming out, hitting the sides of the um, extractor, so there's still quite a bit of honey left in that. When they're a little bit unbalanced like that, it's just a matter of time, unfortunately, to get as much out as you can. One of the little tricks I've learned is um, if the honey's a bit slow, and particularly on a cooler day, just get a, um, a paint stripper gun and um, aim it into the centre of the extractor just to put a bit of bit of warmth in there. That, that sort of helps to get that last little bit of honey out. 
there's still quite a bit of honey coming out of that, so we'll give it another 10 minutes and um, get the most out of them that we can. We got to a point where there's not much more honey coming out of that. We could run it for another hour and still get a little tiny get out, but it's just um, no point. We need to get through these boxes, so we'll just slowly, slowly wind that back down. That bird you can hear is a coel. Um, they turn up in summer, so you know summer's here when those things are making that noise. So what we'll do is um, start taking these frames out and get them back in their, in their right boxes. So I'll just show you the extra little bit of cleaning up that I do. Um, just because I can, it just cleans the frames up nicely. Um, one of the benefits of um, tapping with a knife is it gets all your frames back to an even size. Uh, they can then be, you know, changed around and put anywhere you like. Um, back down in the brew box, um, you can leave them in the honey super, but it really standardises everything and, and cleans everything up nice and tidy. So you get frames that are a bit wonky or crooked old brew frames. Um, just running that knife over them really, really standardises them and makes a nice neat frame out of them. So yeah, these these stickies are gold. Uh, they just um, they're a really good asset for a for a business to have. They just um, yeah, they're gold. So the next step is just to bring these frames out and give them a bit of a tidy up. So I like to get the, the wax and propolis off the lugs, off the spaces there. Give that top bar a clean up. The bottom bar. That's ready to go. Uh, is the X1 I put on there, so I know I've got the right frame for the right box. And it's going back to the same box that come out of it, just getting that correlation going. So once again, good scrape, top bar, bottom bar, spaces. Back into its right box. So all that wax just settles in there and the honey drains out of it overnight. You just keep spacing that out and squashing it down with your high tool. You release all that honey out of there. So um, wax is a real um, asset. It's, so I get about $20 a kilo for it at the moment. So personally, I don't think it's worth more, but that's what I'm getting. So. Um, We'll go through that wax process um, some other day. So that's how I clean those frames up. Another uh, another 12 boxes to go, so I'll keep working on this afternoon and finish them off in the morning and we'll, um, we'll go through this process of the canning honey out of the, the um, extractor and settling it as well. So um, day two of my extracting. I've got through a couple of boxes, about four boxes last night, and I've got the balance of uh, five there now, with um, about three in the extractor here, so that's almost the end of its cycle. Running along nicely, see the inverter there, running about 38, 39, just keep giving it a bit of a tickle, speed it up, just to get that last bit of honey out. So I'm just decanting honey out to the bottom. 
to make room, uh, gets up to the bottom of the cages and the extractor won't spin, so need to keep pulling that honey out. Um, one of the worst things that can happen is if you get distracted, uh, phone rings or someone turns up, and you walk away from that open honey gate and you overflow your bucket. So I've um, started putting these larger tubs between the bucket and the floor. It, it eliminates floor contact. I used to just put a towel under there. Uh, that eliminates floor contact and if it does overflow, it goes into the um, big tub rather than on the floor. So take it from me, there's nothing worse than 20 litres of honey spread over your extracting room floor. It, it's just terrible. Um, the reason why I don't strain straight out the extractor is there's just so much wax in that honey and it takes too long. So what we do is um, pick that honey up and decant it into um, settling tanks, which I'll do now. So to settle our honey, I've uh, got 50 litre drums with honey gates on. Um, so I'll leave that for 24 to 48 hours, depending on the weather. So all the wax will float to the top and you get nice clean honey out of the bottom. It's not clean enough to bottle straight away, it does need another strain, but it takes all that wax to the top. So once we've got an inch or so of um, wax on the top, I'll just scoop it out, get it into the honey melder, into the wax melder, and um, process it into wax. So I just grab my bucket. Upside down under there. let that drain out so I recommend if you're doing any any volume of honey apart, above you know a couple of boxes that you use these um, settling tanks it's just a lot faster and just get a better result if you're not straining straight out of the extractor it's just really time consuming and it's um, not a very efficient use of your time so that's how I settle, settle my honey